Welcome back to my channel. This time we're going to be looking at the selection of EA Play titles available on the xCloud. I have the Xbox Game Pass app fired up here on my Android device, specifically the LG V50. And if we have a look at the EA Play titles in the console section, you will see that there seems to be pretty much an infinite number of them available. You can just keep on scrolling forever, which is neat. Now, if we go to the xCloud section of the Xbox Game Pass app and scroll down to see the EA Play titles, you will see that we actually don't get that many. In fact, we only get 7 games from EA Play on the xCloud, so I guess the message EA is trying to convey here is that if you're into cloud gaming, they pretty much hate you, which is nice. So I've played about an hour of each of these games just to have a look at how they perform and how optimized are they for cloud gaming. The common theme however with all xCloud titles is it's pretty much hit or miss so let's have a look at the footage and you can judge for yourself. So yeah this is Dragon Age Inquisition. Here you can see I'm just reviving my character and now uh, doing whatever the game wants me to do but as you can see the performance is actually pretty good. It does look a little soft around the edges as far as the visuals go. Uh, don't mind the Xbox logo in the corner, I just, for some reason I can't get rid of it. Uh, I think the app probably isn't as optimized for phones which don't have a 16 by 9 ratio, so that also explains the black borders around. So yeah, there are some freezes and frame drops and screen tears from time to time, but it's nothing game-breaking, I would say. xCloud still provides a decent experience. It's not as good as Stadia, for example, but if you're playing on your phone just grinding away at your favorite game or something, I think it's pretty good. I was a Templar. I know what they're capable of. Unfortunately, neither group will even speak to us yet. The Chantry has denounced the Inquisition, and you specifically. Make it take you! Hold, we are not apostates. I do not think they care, Seeker. We are not Templars. We mean you no harm. Doesn't look like they're listening. Now here we have Madden 2020, again with the uh, skipped frames and the uh, frame freezes and the pixelation in the main menu. So obviously I go for the best team in the NFL which are the Jaguars, obviously. But as you can see from the gameplay it actually plays really well even though it's streaming on an Android phone over Wi-Fi. Here's the carry for James Conner of the Steelers. He finds an opening past the 40. It's a foot race. 20, 10, touchdown. James Conner, 71 yards. So I am pretty terrible at all sports games. And I know nothing about the NFL, so I apologize for the gameplay. But as far as the performance goes on xCloud, you can see the graphics are pretty phenomenal. What I've been most impressed with is actually the sound or the commentary it just feels so alive it's been a long time since i played a sports game but i think they've they've come a long way since then with the commentary but right there you can see the screen tearing and like the pixelation it happens from time to time but i think it's still pretty cool that you can just grind away at madden whenever you like on your phone streaming it over wi-fi and it seems to be working pretty well so that's good
Now he's back out there to boom this one away, maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss. And then here you can see the referee saying this guy sucks at Madden. And that drives coaches insane, doesn't it? When they see that happen, it just, it just doesn't feel right. You're loving the pressure that you're seeing from your front. On fourth down, here's Brett Kern to punt the football away. And look at this, it's a fake. And the gamble pays off. They get the first. So they get the first down. Maybe not a huge play in terms of yardage, but the fake punt does the job. So they snap it straight to the up man. What's his responsibility? Normally, obviously, just to protect, but he's got to be a guy that can be pretty agile too, right? Yeah, without a doubt, because you're talking about a guy, even in protection, he may have to slide up and down the line of scrimmage to pick up someone who comes through trying to block a punt. So you know he's got that ability to move, but oftentimes it's a, you know, a running back, a fullback, someone who's used to having the ball in their hands, and he's able to pick up the first down. Next up we have Mirror's Edge Catalyst, a very impressive looking game graphically, which you won't be able to tell too much on the xCloud as the visuals are still a little blurry and pixelated. It all just looks a little bit too soft around the edges, but for the most part I found the game to be completely playable, other than these uh, typical xCloud glitches here and there, but even though this title isn't as good as the first Mirror's Edge, from what I could tell by the reviews. It's still pretty cool to revisit the universe DICE have created with the first game. another one. Great. Just one more and we're good for now. So with Sims I actually had a horrible experience. As you can tell from the screen tearing and the pixelation on the screen, it was actually very hard to do anything in the game whatsoever. Every time I would move the camera or I would do something the screen would sort of freeze up like that. In addition to that, I was wondering how a game like The Sims, which is sort of like a strategy game almost, play on an Xbox controller and the result, I thought at least, was pretty horrible because as you can see the UI is actually built, it's built to be played with a keyboard and mouse, so when you're using an Xbox controller on the xCloud or the Xbox, you have to go from menu to menu with the d-pad and just select each individual thing and it just becomes this multi-level menu hell which is just confusing and very hard to control and I, I just didn't like any of it so this is the only game I actually have not played for more than 30 minutes because I just couldn't bear it together with the performance on the xCloud which in my opinion is horrible. Yeah, so I would not I would not recommend this game at all. And I hope EA or Microsoft or whoever will continue to work on these games and optimize them better. Next up we have the Mass Effect Andromeda, which I've been playing for a while and um, this game seems to be working pretty well on the X Cloud. 
it does suffer from all the issues as all the other games, which is the weird pixelation and the softening of the image. But for the most part it's playable. I would compare it maybe to if you would play this game on the PC at like 720p resolution maybe around 30 FPS. If you look at xCloud from the point of view of being sort of a mobile cloud gaming platform, I think it still performs really well and the game is perfectly playable. Next up we have the Plants vs Zombies uh, Garden Warfare 2. This was actually a very nice surprise since not only does the game work almost flawlessly on the xCloud but also it's just a really sort of a funny twist on the Left 4 Dead series in the universe of Plants vs Zombies and I actually had a lot of fun just playing the game for a while and trying to survive hordes of these uh, adorable zombies from the original game. So no complaints here, if you'd like to shoot some cartoonish zombies with a sunflower, I would definitely recommend this. So finishing off with uh, Unravel 2, which is sort of a platform slash puzzle game. I think it could be played with two players, I haven't tried it, but on the xCloud this is also one of the games which works completely flawlessly and there are actually no problems with it whatsoever, no glitches, no lags. And I'm starting to wonder maybe if it has something to do with how much performance the individual games need because from my experience usually the more intense AAA titles they don't play as well as all these smaller indie games on the xCloud so maybe it has something to do with that but uh, other than that if you love platformers and you have xCloud I would definitely recommend this game it was really fun 
the puzzles are nice, the platforming is nice, the controls are really good, and overall it's just a good game.